Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss the addition and subtraction of fractions. I will be using the concept of the least common multiple, so if you're unfamiliar with that concept, please spend a few minutes viewing video number 9, Least Common Multiples and Greatest Common Factors. It might also be helpful to have reviewed video number 10, Introduction to Fractions. That introduction video will help familiarize you with some of the basic concepts and terminology associated with fractions. I'm concentrating on positive fractions for this video. On video number 13, I will be discussing negative fractions. It isn't that negative fractions are that difficult, but they're less intuitive. So let's get proficient at dealing with positive fractions first. We are going to be working with what are called common fractions. These are fractions that have integers in the numerator and denominator. They are what we normally think of when we talk about fractions, hence the term common. For those of you who are fascinated by trivia, these are sometimes referred to as vulgar fractions. I'm not sure that terminology is in use much anymore. It's a weird name. Well, yes. Is this the Fraction Fairy again? Yes, and I am becoming most displeased with you. Displeased with me? Why? Because I said that vulgar fractions is a weird name? Precisely. Well, don't you think it's at least a little bit strange? I am not in the habit of responding to beings who haven't even been around for a single millennium. Who are you to lecture me on how I name fractions? Well, I'm sorry. I was just expressing my opinion. Don't toy with me. Am I making myself clear? Crystal. Awesome. Goodbye. Okay, everyone. Please excuse my editorializing. I won't do it anymore. At this point in my life, I really don't need to alienate anyone who can make my life a lot more frightening. Let me just stick to the nuts and bolts of addition and subtraction. Sometimes adding or subtracting fractions is easy, and sometimes it is a challenge. It depends on the denominators. When we add fractions or subtract fractions, which have the same denominators, then things are pretty straightforward. Suppose you have half a pizza, and I gave you another half of a pizza. You would now have two halves of a pizza, which is the same as one whole pizza. Mathematically, we would write it like this. This makes a lot of sense to us. Suppose you had three quarters of a pizza, and you ate one quarter of a pizza. You would now have two quarters of a pizza left. Mathematically, we would write it like this. When the fractions have the same denominator, we simply add or subtract the numerators and leave the denominator unchanged. Notice that the fraction 2 quarters can be simplified since both the numerator and denominator have a common factor of 2. 2 quarters of a pizza is equivalent to 1 half of a pizza. When we add and subtract fractions, we normally make the effort of expressing the resultant answer as a simplified fraction. So far, so good. What happens, though, if the denominators are not the same? Suppose you had one half of a pizza, and I gave you an additional one third of a pizza. How much pizza would you have? Well, you would have two slices of pizza, but the size of the slices is not the same. We don't have two halves of a pizza, and we don't have two thirds. We have some portion of pizza, which is between those two values. Visually, we can get a sense of how much pizza we have, but, as the way things stand, it is difficult for us to come up with a precise answer. Suppose, though, that instead of saying that you started with one half of a pizza, I told you that you have three-sixths of a pizza. It's the same amount of pizza, just cut into more slices. And suppose that instead of me giving you one-third of a pizza, I gave you two-sixths of a pizza. Again, the same amount of pizza. Now the problem of how much pizza you have is much easier to solve. You start with three-sixths of a pizza, and I give you an additional two-sixths of a pizza. 
So now you have five sixths of a pizza. Mathematically, what we did is to take the two fractions of one half and one third and express them as equivalent fractions of three sixths and two sixths. I chose the number of six for the new denominator because it is the least common multiple of my existing denominators, two and three. When we are using this technique to solve problems involving fractions, the term least common denominator is commonly used to mean the least common multiple of the denominators. The terms are really interchangeable. If the fraction fairy is still listening, I want to be very clear that my comments on the least common denominator are not intended in any way as a criticism of your naming conventions. Understood. Let's try another example. What is 3 quarters minus 2 thirds? The first step is to find the least common denominator between the two denominators, 4 and 3. It is 12. Next, we have to convert both fractions into equivalent fractions with a common denominator of 12. The first fraction, 3 quarters, has a denominator of 4. I need to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 3 in order to find a fraction equivalent to 3 quarters, which has a denominator of 12. The equivalent fraction is 9 over 12. It is an important point that we have to multiply both the numerator and denominator by the same number. People sometimes forget to do this, so it is a common source of error. So I want to emphasize this point for a moment. Recall in my pizza math that the denominator represents how many slices of pizza there are in a whole pizza, and the numerator represents the number of slices you have. So if I take a pizza which is cut into four pieces, and cut it into 12 pieces instead, this really means that I am taking each quarter of a pizza and cutting it into three pieces. Four quarters comprise one whole pizza, and if each of those quarters is cut into three slices, I have a total of 12 slices, which is what I want. But you had three of those quarters to begin with, so when each of those quarters is cut into three slices, you now have a total of nine slices. Again, the important point is that this represents the same amount of pizza as you had before. The fractions 3 quarters and 9 over 12 are equivalent. In a similar manner, we have to express the fraction 2 thirds as an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 12. In this case, I have to multiply the denominator and numerator by 4. Again, think of it as dividing each of the thirds of pizza into 4 slices my two-thirds of a pizza becomes equivalent to 8 over 12. Now the math is simple. Our original problem of 3 quarters minus two-thirds is now equivalent to 9 over 12 minus 8 over 12. If you have nine pieces and you gave eight of them away, you are left with one-twelfth of a pizza. At least you won't get fat. Let's talk for a moment about mixed fractions. Suppose we have a mixed fraction like 2 and 1 fourth, and we want to subtract 1 and 2 thirds. There are a couple of ways you can work a problem like this, but I recommend that you convert both mixed fractions into improper fractions, and then proceed in the same manner that we have been doing the last few examples. Having said that, if you have another way of working a problem like this that you prefer and that reliably gives you the correct answer, then please use it. So the mixed fraction of 2 and 1 fourth is equivalent to the improper fraction 9 over 4. The mixed fraction of 1 and 2 thirds is equivalent to the improper fraction 5 over 3. Now we find the least common denominator between these two fractions. It is 12. We want to express both 9 over 4 and 5 over 3 as equivalent fractions, each with 12 in the denominator. For the fraction 9 over 4, we multiply both the numerator and denominator by 3 to give us the equivalent fraction of 27 over 12. 
For 5 over 3, we multiply both the numerator and denominator by 4 to give us the equivalent fraction of 20 over 12. So our problem has now become 27 over 12 minus 20 over 12. Subtract the numerators and leave the denominator the same. The answer is 7 over 12. This fraction is in its simplest form, and so we are done. Let's try one more. I want you to try to do this yourself, so pause the video after I give you the problem, and then restart the video when you think you have the answer. Here is the problem. What is 3 and 1 quarter minus 1 and 7 tenths? Please express your answer as a mixed fraction in its simplest terms. Pause the video while you work this out and then resume the video. Let's see how you did. Step 1 is to express both mixed fractions as improper fractions. 3 and 1 quarter is equivalent to 13 over 4. 1 and 7 tenths is equivalent to 17 over 10. Step 2 is to find the least common denominator. The least common denominator between 4 and 10 is 20. Step 3 is to express the fractions as equivalent fractions using the least common denominator. In order to express 13 over 4 as an equivalent fraction with 20 as the denominator, we multiply both the numerator and denominator by 5. 13 times 5 is 65. 4 times 5 is 20. The equivalent fraction is 65 over 20. In order to express 17 tenths as an equivalent fraction with 20 as the denominator, I would multiply both the numerator and denominator by 2. 2 times 17 is 34. 2 times 10 is 20. Our equivalent fraction is 34 over 20. So the problem has become 65 over 20 minus 34 over 20. The numerator is 65 minus 34, which is 31. The denominator remains 20. The fraction is improper since the magnitude of the numerator is greater than the denominator. Use long division to express this as a mixed fraction. The answer is 1 and 11 over 20. Did you get that right? You bet. Wonderful. If you are having trouble, please review the earlier problems. And if you are still struggling, review my earlier videos, particularly videos 9 and 10. We are done with this video. In the next video, we will talk about multiplication and division of positive fractions. Have a nice day, everyone. We hope to see you at Veterans Upward Bound very soon and recommend a friend 